The Church of England has confirmed that Queen Elizabeth has accepted the nomination of Justin Welby, a former oil executive and current Bishop of Durham, as the 105th Archbishop of Canterbury. Welby, who has been a bishop for only one year, will succeed Dr Rowan Williams, who announced his decision to retire at the end of 2012. While Welby is considered to be a conciliator, intending to bridge differences between the Anglican Church of England and the Episcopal Church of the US, his views on equal rights for gays and lesbians seem to be a step back from those of his predecessor, Rowan Williams. The present Archbishop's position on the topic had caused concern to those interested in increased unity between the two churches. The recent US elections signal a distinct trend towards recognising LGBT equal rights and an increase in awareness of female reproductive rights. Bishop Welby has stated support for female bishops and opposition of homophobia while maintaining his opposition towards legalised same-sex marriage. As attendance in the Anglican Church has been dwindling, much attention is being drawn as to how Welby will reconcile and compromise, considering the varying social and political trends influencing church members in England, the US and Africa as well. 31-year-old Savita Halapanova presented with back pain at Ireland's University Hospital in Galway on October 21st and was found to be miscarrying 17 weeks into her pregnancy. According to her husband, having been told she was miscarrying and having been in severe pain, Ms. Halapanova asked for medical termination. This was refused, Mr. Halapanova says, because the fetal heartbeat was still present. He and his wife were told, this is a Catholic country. Even though Savita was emphatic that she was neither Irish nor Catholic, being of Indian and Hindu descent, and even though she developed additional symptoms, the hospital said there was nothing to be done. Two and a half days later, the fetal heartbeat stopped and the dead fetus was removed. Halav Hanavar was taken to intensive care where she died on October 28th. An autopsy found she succumbed to septicemia and E. coli ESBL. The 2012 elections will be remembered as a victory for progressives and a resounding defeat for conservative religious interests across the United States. For example, right-wing politicians Richard Murdoch, Joe Walsh, Todd Akin and Alan West were all defeated. Even Mia Love, the supposed GOP superstar to be in Utah, lost. Legalised same-sex marriage laws were passed in both Maryland and Maine, while the first openly gay senator, Tammy Baldwin, won his elections in Wisconsin. To many observers' surprise, legalised marijuana laws passed in Colorado and Washington. The question now is how will the religious conservatives respond, and will they recognise that today's electorate is more diverse, more educated, more organised and less religious? Will their record of Bible-based vitriolic proclamations and apocalyptic warnings continue to garner support from within the GOP? Or will economic conservatism, unbounded by religious rhetoric, gain recognition as a way to win over future voters? Up to this point, the response has been mixed, with the more fundamentalist groups maintaining the same tactic of spreading fear in the form of biblical interpretation, while the actual politicians who rely on winning the hearts and minds of the people seem to be far more conciliatory. Another important also must be answered. Will the romance between the GOP and the evangelicals begin to tarnish as the consequences of the current GOP platform, in addition to the message of archaic notions of equality, alienate much of America? Hawaii delivered its own electoral surprises that indicate a greater willingness for voters to speak out for equality in political representation by electing the first Buddhist and Hindu members of Congress. Democrat Maisie Harino, a Buddhist and former Lieutenant Governor, will represent Hawaii in the US Senate, while Democrat Tulsi Gabbard, a Hindu, will become the representatives of Hawaii's 2nd Congressional District. Interestingly, Senator-elect Harino is the first female US Senator born in Hawaii, and the first Asian-American woman to win election to the Senate. 
Her views and policies include support for female reproductive and abortion rights, support for embryonic stem cell research, the need for kids to learn both abstinence and birth control. Not surprisingly, she is a member of the Progressive Caucus. Congresswoman-elect Gabbard will be taking the seat being vacated by Maisie Harino. Ms. Gabbard served in the US military, having volunteered for a 12-month tour in Iraq. Born in 1981, she is the youngest woman ever elected to a state office with a 2002 victory in Oahu's 42nd district. Gabbard is pro-choice, opposed to the Defence of Marriage Act, and is also known for her conscientious efforts to protect the environment. While these examples of political electoral victories of non-Christian candidates signifies a willingness to elect candidates that would have previously been dismissed, both Maisie Harino and Tulsi Gabbard have exemplary records of service to their country and their specific constituencies.